Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we have a great question from India from a guy named Abhishek. Abhishek asks, can you please explain how to use an on-camera flash? Well, that is a very broad question. It's actually, we're gonna show you some tricks today in this episode, but we can't show you everything about on-camera flash, but we'll give you a really good head start. Now, actually this episode has two parts. The first part, I'm gonna uh, take you outside and show you how to use your uh, flash to balance the ambient light. That's all the light that we can't control, light that's coming from the sun with the light from the flash. And I'll be showing you how to do that with a Canon and a Nikon because they behave a little bit differently. And then after that, we're gonna bring the cameras inside and then I'm gonna show you how to bounce the light off the ceiling and use some reflectors and stuff to get some uh, a little bit more pleasing looks with your on-camera flash. Now before we do all of this, uh, when we go outside, we need to make sure that your camera is set up correctly because if it's not, what I'm about to show you won't work. So I'm gonna show you first on a Nikon how to do this because Nikons and Canons and Sonys, they all behave a little bit differently. So on a Nikon system, what you need to do is you need to make sure that your FP sync is turned on. And what that allows you to do is to take your uh, flash and have it fire at shutter speeds above about 200th of a second. And that's because of a thing called sync speed. Now what we're gonna do here on the Nikon, uh, you control a lot of the flash functionality from the camera, and so you have to go into the menu settings and set some things up. Well, on a Canon and other brands, you set a lot of those from the flash itself, not the camera, and so it's a little bit opposite. So let's start with the uh, Nikon here. Now, to turn on FP Sync, what you need to do is go into your menu settings, go down to the pencil, and then once you're in there, you need to go down where it says bracketing and flash, and then find this custom function that says auto FP, and make sure that's turned on. And once you have that turned on, then you're set and everything is good to go. The next thing I want you to do is uh, on the uh, Canon, we're gonna be shooting in aperture priority mode. Same with the Nikon. Eventually we're gonna take the Nikon and put it in full manual mode to get some really amazing effects. So let me show you how to do the, uh, essentially the same thing on a Canon can uh, flash. Now on a Canon flash, it's not called FP uh, sync or FP auto, it's actually called high speed, high speed sync. And so you do that by um, looking on the back of your flash and there's actually gonna be a couple of buttons and you push those together and you're gonna get this little icon that shows up and it looks like a little lightning bolt uh, with an, uh, an H next to it. And that means that high speed sync is turned on. And once you have that set up, then your Canon system will be able to shoot above normal sync speeds. So you'll be able to shoot at sync speeds uh, faster than about 200th of a second. Now other camera brands um, will allow you to do the same thing and you're gonna either do it in the menu or on the flash itself. So um, you'll have to look in your user's manual to figure out how to do that. But high speed sync or FP sync, um, look that up and then you have to turn that on. Now once we have that all set up, that's gonna allow us to shoot outside in bright sunlight. So let's go outside now and I'll show you how to balance ambient light with light from the flash. One of the really cool things about an on-camera flash is that you can control the ambient light, that's all the light around us. Well, you can control that separately from the light that's coming from the flash. Now to illustrate this, our model here is Sam. She's gonna be helping us out today. Now what I'm gonna be showing you is something that you can do with an Icon or a Canon or a Sony or any kind of uh, camera that you can have an on-camera flash uh, to control. Now one of the big differences though is the way that you do this. So we're gonna start with the Canon camera because it's one of the easiest cameras to control the flash and the ambient light. So what I'm gonna be doing is uh, the background is really, really bright. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my camera in aperture priority mode. That's really important. I'm gonna put it on aperture priority mode, which is AV for a Canon camera. And I'm just gonna take a picture of Sam. And what my uh, camera is gonna do is it's going to try to expose for the ambient light and then just fill in some light from the flash on her face. So let me take a really quick picture. So Sam look right at me, beautiful, just like that. Okay, now that looks pretty good. I like that. The difference though is the background is too bright for my taste. And what I wanna do is I wanna take several shots where the background is darker and darker and darker and darker. Now the background is obviously, it's lit by the sun, not my flash. And so I can control that on a Canon camera using exposure compensation. Now the thing that to understand is on a Canon camera, you uh, do that by rolling this dial back here on some of the Rebels. There's a button that you push that says plus minus. 
and then you can uh, push a dial to take the exposure compensation up or down. I'm going to take my exposure compensation down and what is happening is the Canon camera is going to only apply exposure compensation to the ambient light. So it's going to intentionally underexpose the light and when I dial that down more it's going to underexpose even more. And so in effect what will happen is the background is going to get darker and darker and darker. The cool thing though is the flash is illuminating SAM. And because the flash is separately controlled, it's a totally different control, it's going to have consistent light and so SAM is going to stay consistent but the background is going to get darker and darker. So I'm going to take some pictures. So once again SAM look right at me. So I'm going to take a shot just like I uh, normally would. Now I'm going to roll my exposure compensation down by a stop, take a shot, roll it down by two stops, take a shot, roll it down by three stops, take a shot, and now we're at max. I'm rolled down as far as possible. Now we can look at these shots and you can see that the background is getting darker and darker and darker. And it's really cool because you can control the background and the foreground totally separately. Now, uh, on a Canon camera, you do use that uh, using exposure compensation. On a Nikon camera, it works a little bit differently, so I'm going to grab a Nikon D90 here. Now, on a Nikon, when you change your exposure compensation, it's a global change. And what that means is not only does it do exposure compensation for the ambient light, it also changes the exposure compensation for the flash. They are coupled and so everything is going to get darker and darker and darker and darker. So you can't use exposure compensation to do this. What you have to do is shoot in manual mode. Now in aperture priority mode, when you're uh, affecting your exposure compensation, the way your camera is changing the exposure is by speeding up the shutter speed. So all we have to do is put our camera in manual mode and make sure that we have our camera properly exposed for the background. So I'm going to do that. So I have my camera f4 and at f16 it looks like I am I have a proper exposure. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shot of Sam just like we did before and I have a nice well balanced picture. Now to make the flash and the uh, background work uh, independently all I need to do now is start speeding up my shutter speed and the faster my shutter speed is the darker my background is going to become but because my fill flash is working independently because I'm on manual mode SAM is going to stay consistent just like on the Canon and it's pretty easy once you get a hang of it. So I'm going to do this really fast. So I'm going to take a shot of SAM metered where I need it to be. I'm going to take my background and I'm going to speed up my shutter speed. Take another shot. I'm going to speed up my shutter speed a little bit more. Take a shot and that's pretty cool. You can see that the background is getting darker and darker and darker. So on a Nikon, you use manual mode and you can totally change the ambient light versus the flash. On a Canon, just use exposure compensation and that will change the ambient light but leave the flash alone. All right, now that we've done that, what we need to do is go and try to shoot some stuff inside. So I'll be showing you how to move your flash around to get some really neat effects by bouncing the light. So let's take a look. All right, so we have light that we can't control. That's called ambient light. Again, that's just the light that's coming in through the window or the lights in the ceiling. That's light that we really cannot control. And then we have light from our flash, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today, the basics of controlling that light. And so what we're gonna do is, we have uh, a couple of different cameras here. We have a really nice Nikon D3S. It's a high-end professional camera and the latest Nikon SB900 speed light. Uh, and this is really terrific. We also have a consumer camera, which is the uh, Canon 7D. And then we're even gonna fl uh, throw in an older flash. This is a Canon 550EX. And so I just wanna show you that uh, the techniques that we're gonna be showing you today, you don't have to have the latest, greatest, really nice Nikon camera. You can have a camera that's uh, a little bit older or maybe just a beginning uh, DSLR camera and you can apply these techniques, it'll work just fine. You don't even need the latest, greatest flash. As long as you have one that goes on your camera that you can move around, it's gonna help you do a lot of these techniques. So I'm gonna ask Sam to come out. Sam is a model that's gonna help us out today. And just to clarify, uh, a lot of the stuff I'm going to be showing you, I'll be showing uh, you on uh, shooting Sam as a portrait model. I'm glad that you're here today, Sam. Um, but a lot of this stuff will also work uh, just for still life uh, or product photography as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have somebody that you're shooting. It will work for all kinds of different things. Now normally when you're shooting, we're going to start here with this Canon 7D, you have this pop-up flash. So I'll pop that up and this uh, has some issues and so Sam if you can take a couple steps back and I'll show you when I shoot this with this big long lens like this uh, when I take the shot this flash isn't tall enough and actually some of the light hits the lens and it causes a big shadow to be cast 
and that's not very good. The other thing is this is a really, really small source of light, and so it's coming straight at our subject, and that's really not how light behaves normally. It's sort of like strapping a really high-powered uh, spotlight to your head and walking around. If you saw the world that way, it would look really strange. So we don't really like these uh, flashes. An on-camera flash is going to help us really modify the light. So you'll notice that when I put this on the camera, the first thing you'll notice is it's a lot taller, and so that allows it to clear the lens. The other thing you'll notice is now we can move this around, and we can swivel it, and we can do all kinds of things to bounce the light. And bouncing the light is going to help us get all kinds of different effects. So one thing to, to note here is that uh, this uh, flash and most flashes, like this Nikon SB900, have a very uh, small secret. And that is when you're tilting them up and down, um, there is actually, at the very end, a really tiny little click there. And most people don't notice that. You have to push in the side and click it down. It's just really minute. And that is for if you're shooting something pretty close, that's telling the flash, hey, I'm shooting something really close, and it automatically decreases the power in the flash. So that's something that most flashes have that uh, is a little secret that is sort of hidden. So now that you know about that, let's talk about how to bounce this flash around and get some really neat effects. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a picture here of Sam, and I have my camera in um, shutter priority mode, and I'm shooting at an ISO of 100, and I have my camera set to 60th of a second, and uh, the, the uh, aperture is going to open and close depending on my ambient light. So I'm just going to take a headshot here of Sam, and uh, the thing that's really cool is you should turn on your flash. So let's try that one more time. So here we go. Perfect. Okay. So now when we look at that, you can see that the light is still almost the same as it was when I had my pop-up flash, except for now I don't have a shadow in there, but I still have really strong shadows underneath uh, Sam's chin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce the light. And what this is doing is it's taking this light and it's going to hit the ceiling and it's going to illuminate the ceiling and then it's going to bounce down on Sam's face. And that's going to be more uh, like what normal outdoor sunlight is. So light's coming from above instead of coming straight at our subject. So once again, Sam, let's look right here and okay. Now we look at that, you can see that's a little bit more pleasing to the eye, but we can even take it a few steps beyond that. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, switch over here to the Nikon, just so that you can see that this works with any camera. And I'm going to turn on my flash, and I'm going to bounce this light. Instead of from the ceiling, I'm going to bounce it off this wall. Now um, what I'll do is I'll swivel this to the left-hand side. So now the light's going to be hitting this, and then it's going to come and hit the side of Sam's face. So it's going to give us some really, really interesting looks. So look right at me, Sam. Perfect. Just like that. Okay. Now that's pretty cool. The problem with that is that um, this wall is green. And sometimes when you have walls that are really strong colors, either green or red or blue, what can happen is when the light hits that, it actually picks up that color and carries it with it. And so our subject can turn green or red or blue as well. So if you have that happening, either bounce off the ceiling if it's white, or what you can do is you can get one of these guys. This is a, a disc reflector, and this is a flashpoint reflector that we uh, just got and love. And what I'll do is I'll actually set this up at an angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be bouncing off this, which is white, and into Sam's face, which will be really, really nice. Um, and the other thing that's really cool about having a reflector like this is that you can take it anywhere. So if you're outside, you can bounce the light. If you're in a big building that has no walls close by, you can still use it to bounce the light. It's really, really nice. So let's try that one more time. So look right at me. There we go. Bam, just like that. I really, really like that. I'm going to move this back just a little bit. We're going to take one more shot here. There we go, just like that. Awesome. I love that. And you can see that it really gives us a different feel than just having a light that's coming straight at our model. Here's another trick that I'm going to show you, and that is to take a, uh, a disc reflector like this one, and I'm actually going to raise it up just a little bit, and I'm going to try something that's really fun. Now, this will work if you have a wall as well. So if you have a wall behind you that's white, you can do this, or you can use a reflector like this. So I'm going to have you take another step back, Sam. And then what you can do is take a flash like this, and instead of bouncing it to the side or up to the ceiling, you can actually bounce it from behind. And so what you're doing is you're having nice soft light that's hitting straight on like that, but it's going to be coming from just slightly above, and so this is going to become my light. 
So I have my light all set up. I'm going to put this in aperture priority mode at 60th of a second. And here we go. So Sam, look right at me. Perfect. Just like that. And you can see that's really nice soft light. All right, well that will get you started with using your on-camera flash. Now for more information about sync speed and why we needed to turn on high-speed sync, check out episode 17 of Digital Photography 101 and it will show you what sync speed is and why we had to make that change. Well remember, if you have a question about photography, photography-related gear, you can always send those questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.